Welcome back everyone and thanks for joining me for another episode of my Aston Villa career on FIFA 16. Now, first things first, there was a slight problem with recording. Well, what happened was I, I recorded the transfer deadline day of trying to put all these deals together, trying to replace Leroy Fur, who we lost to Everton in the previous episode, but when I came to edit that footage, only thing present was the, the audio file, not the video. So, fortunately, guys, you're going to miss the transfer deadline day. But don't worry, I'm going to go through all the signings. Well, a couple of signings that I made on transfer deadline day a bit later on in this episode. You've just seen the article as well that Liverpool are looking to sign me up to become their new manager after they've had a pretty poor run of form and at the time I didn't know what to do so I've stalled on the offer. I want to hear your thoughts on the situation. Inside I'm saying no because of being a United fan and everything and I, th I think I find it a bit difficult to do that. I know it's just a game and everything but anyway uh, and it was interesting to see that Manchester United had signed Christian Eriksen in January which I actually did in my United career. So my uh, January signings were Adrian, you already know that. I then brought in Patrick Van Arnold. My thinking behind Van Arnold was the fact that Kieran Richardson will be leaving in the summer. And I know I've got a Marvy, but you just got to think about that squad depth for next season as well going forwards. And my final signing of January to kind of replace Leroy Fur was Stephen Naismith. I know he's a lot older than Fur. I know his overall rating and potential isn't as good but not to worry Stephen Naismith may not even be here next season it's just to fill in for the time being because in the summer I plan to absolutely overhaul this team a massive upheaval there's going to be a mass exodus of players leaving and of course they will be replaced by maybe a lot of your suggestions that you guys have been leaving in the comments below we will see how all that pans out once we get there and just quickly in that recording which messed up for me we played Norwich in the Premier League and we picked up three points there at Carrow Road only just though we scraped that 1-0 win up next we had the West Midlands derby midweek and you can see that in the next round of the FA Cup we have been drawn away against Middlesbrough and you will be able to see highlights of that a bit later on in this episode so a lot of changes happening all around Aston Villa at the moment. A lot of speculation as well about me moving to Liverpool. It's kind of interesting to know as well that Liverpool are coming up for Villa on the fixture list right after the FA Cup game against Middlesbrough. It'd be at home as well. Questions surrounding would I be in charge of Villa? Would I be in charge of Liverpool for that one? Where three points are a must for both teams. I, I, I think I'm going to be staying at Villa for uh, the time being. That, that's my main project to get Villa back to winning ways. But let me know what you think of that offer in the comments below. Up next then was the West Midlands Derby clash number two. And it was Adrian's first West Midlands Derby for Aston Villa. Would he be able to keep a clean sheet? This was the team I went with. Stephen Naismith got his second start for Villa as he did feature in our previous game at Carrow Road against Norwich where we won 1-0. Kind of funny, isn't it, seeing that Naismith actually signed for Norwich in real life and featured in that Liverpool game on the weekend. It was a nine-goal thriller. Amazing stuff. But anyway, this game against West Brom, it was the baggers that got their nose in front. We just four minutes gone of this game. It was an absolute shocker for Villa at the back. Poor defending all around and it was West Brom's new signing, Troy Deeney, with that powerful header. You know, throughout this game, you'll see quite a few highlights with West Brom working down that left side and they were having so much luck. That's why they were exploiting it. And they almost made it 2-0 if it wasn't for Adrian with his safe hands there. The ball struck right down his throat from Gardner. Again, poor defended between my two centre-backs. They could have done it a lot better. They swung in yet another dangerous looking ball from that left side. And they almost struck goal as well. And that, believe it or not, with 38 minutes gone, that shot from Grenier was our first chance on goal. And it just goes fizzing past the post. It was almost screaming out to hit the post and cross the line to get the equaliser. But it goes into the crowd instead. Just my luck. In the second half, I did expect a better performance. And we, we delivered. I mean, Gill, with this quality ball into the box, picked out the head of Charlie Austin at that far post. And it was up to Austin to try and find the uh, the back of the net. But again, another chance went begging for Villa. You know, before that hour mark, West Brom, they could have easily been up maybe 2-3-0. 
and the game tucked away in bed. We just simply didn't hit top gear. The team really fatigued after that Sunday fixture against Norwich. They really took it out of us and we just couldn't get going. There was no fight back like there was in the, pre the previous time that we played West Brom earlier in the season back at Villa Park where that was a six goal thriller where it ended three all. West Brom, they, they scored their goal and they pretty much sat on it then and as I said they were so tightly packed we found it difficult to break them down and because we were fatigued it was just even harder. So they came away with all spoils in well, that game, the Baggers, picking up three points the there. Back, and then before we knew it, we yeah, were at Middlesbrough to play in the, the FA far, Cup with a chance of going through to the quarterfinals on the line. Not much of a change around right, for the team. Adrian the started in goal. Yeah, I had Clark and Okore at the back. Agbon Lahore got a start over Charlie Austin, who was looking very tired. Naismith got his third start for the Villa. And Bakuna came in to replace a tired-looking Gill. Now Middlesbrough found themselves 1-0 up within 25 minutes gone of the game. The finish coming from Stuart Dowden. Poor defending once again from Akore and Richards. They just failed to close him down, to put him under pressure, to force him to make a mistake. And they could have had a second from Stuani just before the break. And that certainly, I, I think, would have put the game to bed. We did win a corner just before the break and I just went for goal with Patrick Van Harnel. I just thought, well, why not? Let's just go for it. Let's see what happens. The ball hit the post. Back out to Naismith who headed it across the line but he was offside and you'll see that he was way offside just on the uh, the replay here as Patrick Van Harnel strikes the ball. There he is, Naismith, way offside. Disappointed and I knew in the second half we had to come out firing on all cylinders. We needed to get back into this game. Because realistically, the FA Cup is probably the only piece of silverware we can win this season. We're at the Capital One Cup. I'm not sure about the Premier League. It seems to be Arsenal and Chelsea in that two-horse race at the moment. But we did get ourselves... It was Westwood with the equaliser. The Villa fans sent into raptures. I think the setup was better than the goal itself. I think... I don't know, maybe if the keeper for Middlesbrough hadn't have touched the ball, it would have been even, it would have been perfect really, but that 1-2 between Naismith and Westwood, perfect and a sign of things to come. If I could get Westwood going, I mean Westwood really breaking out into this team now, really getting used to it. We had a corner, 82nd minute, what a time to score. Villa fans didn't know which way to turn, didn't know how to celebrate, they were shocked. We were 2-1 up, we really turned this game around on its head with that header from Akore. We won a free kick and I just thought you know what I'm gonna waste some time here I'm gonna run down the clock by actually setting up for a proper free kick and it'd be Bakuna to uh, take it for us and I thought you know 31 yards out we're 2-1 up take this the ref will blow the whistle for the final time we're into the next round but I was not expecting Bakuna to score from such a distance he made it 3-1 the game completely out of sight for Middlesbrough now, what a turnaround. I'm so impressed with how we performed in that final half hour against Middlesbrough. It was just brilliant. We really controlled the game at our own pace. We frustrated the opposition and they fell right into our trap. The Borough fans, they were screaming for the final whistle. Why wasn't it happening? We almost made it 4-1. Could we from this chance? And Gabby Obolahor did. We'd absolutely humiliated Middlesbrough in the second half. Just when it looked like Borough were going to sit back and defend that 1-0 lead that they had in the first half. They, they were all over the place. After that third goal had gone in, they couldn't stop that fourth from Gabby Abon Lahore as he struck it sweetly into that bottom corner. So we are into the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. Get in. We're on a bit of a run lately in that competition. And that's about it for this episode, guys. Hope you've enjoyed, and I will see you all soon for the next one. Thanks for watching.